because tomorrow, on Sunday, December the 6th, 2015, my native land, Finland, from which I am now separated for the second time in my life because of immigration, will celebrate 98 years of official independence. I want to speak about and to it here on YouTube. To start my speech, I will make a few disclaimers. This speech is not designed to worsen Finland's image, international or national image. It is not designed to make Finns feel bad about themselves. It is not designed to promote any other country over Finland as a better place to live. Each person has a right to decide, of course, where he or she <clears throat> wants to live. And I agree that despite the problems which I'm about to outline, Finland in quite many ways is still a fairly good country to live in. However, it would be dishonest and even foolish for me, despite the fact that I am an expatriate Finn, to claim that everything is all, all right in Finland, because that clearly is not the case. Anyone who seriously and frequently follows the Finnish news on the internet, for example, will come to the conclusion that there are quite many problems in Finland, although internationally it is still a fairly good and safe country to live in. Anyway, to start my speech officially, I want to read many Bible verses on the conditions and possibilities for the human nation's blessing and curse. All the quotations are taken out of the New King James Version. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Then from <clears throat> Psalm 85, verses 1, 4, 8, and 9. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. Restore us, O God, of our salvation, and cause your anger towards us to cease. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for uh, he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. And just as a correction toward us. Then from Psalm 126, verse 4. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Then from Zechariah, chapter 6, Verse 8, and he, meaning God, called to me, meaning Zechariah, and spoke to me, saying, See, those who go toward the north country have given rest to my spirit in the north country. Then from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, Yet I, meaning God, have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. <clears throat> and finally, from Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, And you will be hated, meaning the disciples of Jesus Christ, by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Finland has often, during its fairly long history, not as an independent country, but as an inhabited uh, region, being chastised and tested by God, but it has often also been protected from a more severe punishment by him. Several times, or actually many times, if we include the small skirmishes, Russian armies or smaller Russian military units have invaded and devastated parts of Finland including one particularly brutal period of occupation in the 1710s and the start of 1720s, known as the Greater Wrath. 
Um, but most recent cases of Russian or at that time Soviet invasions of Finland took place during the Winter War from 1939 to 1940 and during the last uh, few months of uh, the Continuation War from 1941 to 1944. Yet the Russian armies and smaller units of Russian military forces have never destroyed the entire Finland or never have permanently occupied it, although Finland did belong to Russia for over 100 years for most of the time as a self-governing grand duchy. Nor have they exterminated or deported the Finnish nation. Finland has often suffered from famine or hunger, most recently during the winter of 1942, but God has so far eventually delivered Finland from hunger. <clears throat> Finland's economy, which is unfortunately in an ongoing crisis with high unemployment and low, at best low, economic growth, has sometimes shrunken severely, most recently in 2008, I believe, or then in 2009, but it has never collapsed completely. Moreover, God has in his grace often sent powerful Christian revivals, that is, periods when many people have been saved, have repented of their sins, and have received Jesus Christ as their Savior in a short period of time uh, to Finland. At the national level, the latest Christian revival happened either in the 1960s or, according to some, Finnish Christians in the late 1970s and the start of the 1980s. This was known as the so-called Ulivainio revival after the late famous Finnish Pentecostal evangelist Mr. Nilo Ulivainio. At the regional level, the latest Christian revival probably happened in Finland during the 1990s and the early 2000s. Currently, there are probably some local revivals often centering around one or more local congregations uh, going on in Finland. Fortunately, thousands of Finns across the church lines and often across various doctrin doctrinal lines are praying for a new Christian revival and are also actively spreading the gospel in Finland. Finland, like the other Western countries, desperately needs a Christian revival. Many Finns are seeking a deeper purpose for their lives. After all, it is said in the book of Ecclesiastes that God has put eternity, that is a sense that this life will go on even after physical death in the hearts of people. Unfortunately, most of them are seeking uh, that purpose for their lives in the wrong sources, such as spiritism, occultism, mysticism, yoga, syncretism, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, and other false uh, forms of religion. Thank God some Finns here and there are getting saved all the time. Christian values and Christianity in general have publicly been mocked a lot in Finland, like in most other Western countries since the 1960s. Blasphemy or um, an open mocking of God is no longer in practice a punishable offense. Unfortunately, the Finnish Evangelical Lutheran Church, to which something like 70% of Finns still belong officially, generally speaking, allows its pastors to favor, for example, universalism, the heresy according to which all people will be saved eventually and will spend eternity in heaven, religious pluralism, according to which there are at least some or several right religions, and as long as people are sincerely committed to any one of these religions, they will be saved. Then moral relativism, according to which whether an action is right or wrong depends on who does it, to whom, and at what kind of time, and under what kinds of circumstances. In other words, according to the moral relativists, there is no such thing as an absolutely right action 
or universally right action or an absolutely or universally wrong action. Um, abortion, homosexuality, including increasingly the homosexual marriages, which unfortunately the Finnish parliament approved in November 2014, and which, unless God mightily and supernaturally intervenes, will become legal in 2017. Then premarital and extramarital sex, at least under certain circumstances, and the claim that baptism and the Holy Communion as outward sacraments or holy actions of the Church uh, will save people even if they never consciously during their physical lives receive Jesus as their Savior and uh, repent of their sins. To be fair, many other Finnish Christian churches and movements and communities have become at least slightly or partly secularized Therefore, they have at least slightly or partly started to conform to the surrounding secularized and sinful culture. Respect for and obedience to the parents, teachers, <clears throat> other civil servants and other authorities has clearly declined also in Finland since the 1960s. Currently, especially in the major cities like in the Helsinki region, which is the Finnish national capital region, it is quite common for many Finnish children and teenagers to swear or to talk otherwise rudely to their parents or teachers. Some of them even use sexual obscenities while talking nastily to their parents or teachers. Racism in Finland is not very violent or, generally speaking, very loud, partly due to the rather low percentage of immigrants and refugees over there. There are something like 5% maybe, although the number might be increasing due to the sudden influx of many Syrian refugees. In 2005, however, as those of you who have followed the social media and are able to understand Finnish, racist or at least ethnically and religiously prejudiced opinions have increased in Finland, largely because of the sudden influx of many thousands of Syrian refugees into Finland, like into various other European countries. Finland's social security system is still, by the international standards, quite extensive. It has, however, been gradually reduced and tightened in its conditions since the early 1990s. Partly this has been necessary due to Finland's growing public debt, uh, the sometimes notable abuse of some social benefits, and the goal of making Finns more self-reliant and entrepreneurial. Finland's educational system is still, statistically and internationally speaking, good, even, by some comparisons, excellent, uh, despite the gradual cutbacks of the Finnish educational budget. It has challenges and problems, however. Well, one acute challenge, of course, is how to educate the many uh, Syrian and possibly other Arab or Middle Eastern refugee children and teenagers, some of whom cannot even read functionally, or at least not fluently, and some of whom have only received a few or some years of public education. And, of course, generally speaking, uh, how to find enough qualified and enthusiastic and committed Finnish as a second language, te uh, language teachers, especially at the elementary and junior high schools. Moreover, the growing need for special education, because at this moment something like 10% of Finland's students, at least at the grade school level, need either part-time or full-time special education, um, has not been fully met by the graduation of newly qualified special education teachers with the result that several special education teachers and their um, class assistants are formally unqualified, which of course causes pedagogical and discipline problems and motivational problems in various special education classes. 
peace and discipline in the classrooms, even among the so-called normal students, unfortunately, have deteriorated clearly in many grade schools of Finland, especially at the junior high schools. Although the problem is more severe in the major Finnish urban areas, such as the Helsinki, Tampere and Turku regions. The Finnish teachers need more tools and rights to effectively restore peace and discipline, especially into their classrooms. And as a personal note, I might say that uh, so many Finnish teenagers talk so nastily to their teachers, even to their regular teachers, and of course to uh, many substitute teachers, that they should, at least for some weeks, be suspended from school until they formally, preferably in writing, apologize for the rude and often deeply insulting language that they use and promise never to use that language again. Of course, I do know from personal experience that many of them come from troubled uh, or even broken homes and bring that baggage of emotional distress and even spiritual anguish into the schools. And since often they either are too desperate or too ignorant or too timid to seek effective help, especially from Christians, uh, then they spill out their guts, their bad feeling to those people with whom they spend their time at school, especially adults. Um, yes, anyway, the Finnish teachers need more tools and rights to effectively restore peace and discipline, especially into their classrooms. Despite the problems and challenges which I have mentioned above, Finland is still overall a fairly good country to live in. Let us pray God to have mercy also on Finland, uh, to transform it into a clearly more Christian country, and to empower the Finnish Christians to more effectively spread the gospel. May he also continue Finland's outward peace in a military sense, which began in 1945, as long as possible. Happy and blessed Independence Day, dear Finland and Finns.